Hey folks, um, I'd like to take some time, uh, try to cut it short, but I think it's going to be a long video. Uh, let me walk you through all of the sample scenes that come with Momentum uh, 2.0. Uh, they start being very simple scenes and get into more complex features. Um, I try to document all of them um, in the documentation as well. And of course, you know, the sample scenes will be delivered with the add-on so that you can have a look yourself and try all the features out. So let's start to have a look with the very simple scenes at first and walk through all of them. So the very first scene uh, demonstrates um, just a very simple ridge body. So really what you see here is, you know, all of these objects are ridge bodies, they're colliding and uh, settling down, that's all. They're using several different shapes, so we have a polygon mesh shape here and some implicit shapes. The next scene uh, demonstrates the so-called collision surface, which is a high-risk collision surface used together with rigid bodies uh, to enable collision between uh, high-resolution objects and low-resolution objects for performance reasons. Uh, the next scene is demonstrating the deformed rigid bodies, which is a very powerful feature that you can use to create very high complexity with just several uh, objects. So what you see here is we have an implicit object, we have a ground, and we have one single mesh. However, the mesh is modeled in a way that basically, um, if I just select some of those guys and move them off, you will be able to see that basically it's all polygon islands of separated bricks. In the simulation, you're actually getting a simulation that has every single polygon island simulated as a separate um, rigid body. So that's very powerful and gives you very nonlinear way of working with complex scenery with just very few objects. The next scene shows the basic ice uh, rigid body emission setup. So what you see here is just an emission of boxes um, using the ice integration of momentum. Um, so let's shoot ahead. I know it's a lot, but we'll have to move. It's a lot of scenes. Uh, so the next scene shows basic constraints. Uh, again, you know, just using the toolbar, there's no ice here, just basic. Uh, constraint setups. Notice how all the constraints are objects, so you can actually go ahead and delete one of them, for example, and that will, uh, well, make that connection break. The next uh, scene, number six, demonstrates standard soft body behavior. So here we have several soft bodies with different settings, uh, just for you to compare how they work and what they do. Um, then in the next scene, we'll have a little bit more complex soft body setup where basically here uh, you have one mesh that is uh, created using the text tools and every single uh, letter is simulated as separate soft bodies so when we play back this from the beginning you'll notice how uh, well they're behaving as separate soft bodies and they're piling up and everything um, on top of normal soft bodies we have ropes so in this scene we just show several settings for the ropes notice how they have shape recovery support so that you can actually drive the exact shape of the ropes while in simulation. Of course we support subcurves, uh, very important, so you can actually select edges, create one single curve list, let's say, and have one single curve object containing several curves, uh, like in this case, and you can simulate them um, as separate ropes. Um, then we'll have a look at cloth features. So here we have just uh, standard soft uh, body setups for cloth. Of course, you can simulate that as well, and you can use ice to drive all of those settings. Furthermore, uh, we have the ability of connecting soft bodies to rigid bodies using the so-called anchors. Um, so here you can see how um, the soft body is connected to the top rigid body, and then the rigid body connected to the bottom of the soft body again. So that it gives you a sense of possibilities and how that can be done. Um, and scene 12, you see the same thing with anchors, but this time we're applying it to ropes, so you can see how this rigid body is actually hanging on those ropes. Um, number 13 is very interesting. It's, it's a scene that demonstrates the one of the possibilities that you have to animate kinematic states, so to animate between active and passive. In this sample, uh, this so-called modifier null actually changes the mass to something above zero uh, so that they these objects become active. Then when the lower object passes, it actually turns them back to mass zero so they become passive again. And the very end of the simulation, using the F curve on the actual operator, they're all turned back to active and they're all falling all together. 
a very complex simulation. And again, here, there's no ice used. It's just using the toolbar and the operators that come with momentum. Um, number 14 shows how to use ice to drive ropes. Actually, I think this sample scene is broken. I'll have to do that again. Yeah, this one is broken. I'll fix it for the release. Sorry about that. Uh, number 15 uh, shows the use of ice to simulate something other than meshes. So here actually we're looking at a point cloud and just arbitrary connections and you can create uh, soft bodies of arbitrary shape using the ice integration. Uh, it's very powerful for custom soft bodies. Number 16 uh, shows how to use um, a blend of um, to form rigid bodies together with ice controls to turn objects from following a keyframe animation to active simulation. So when you play this back, it looks like it's breaking, but really what happens is a keyframe based animation turning them from passive to active, inheriting velocity so that the you know the keyframe animation actually matches properly the simulation. Um, furthermore, <laughs> we keep going. We have number scene 17, which demonstrates the use of the so-called deform controls. The form controls are a way of controlling um, meshes through ice uh, by using uh, uh, helper particles. So here, what we do is we introduce uh, a fake, actually a uh, artificial force that is a rolling force in some of the letters that forces them to follow that motion, even though it's not realistic, really. And that is achieved through ice. Uh, feel free to have a look at the ice tree. Number 18 uh, is again something like that where we use ice to manipulate the forces on objects. So in this case, uh, actually, the cubes are all climbing to the center of the world and they're piling up like that. Again, have a look at the ice tree to see how that works. Uh, number 19 uh, demonstrates again ice for soft bodies. So here we have a mesh soft body simulated through ice, and uh, the green lines you can see are arbitrary random soft body springs that have been created through ice and integrated into momentum. So that way, uh, the rigid body actually, uh, the soft body actually has random connections that give it this kind of jelly behavior and random surface. It's very powerful. It's uh, really a scene for TDs to understand how to create. Um, your own springs for cloth or your own springs for soft bodies uh, when you want to create very particular behaviors. We have the scene number 20 where uh, we try to use all the features to connect cloth to ropes uh, and then again to cloth. So what you can see here is a flag hanging on a pole and ropes are connecting it to another flag. And you can see how everything interacts with everything properly. Scene number 21 uh, is a very complex scene that uses, and let me switch camera here slightly. Um, I've built basically a bridge of hanging uh, objects. There's rope objects, so these are curves, these are implicit cubes, there's a curve here as well. And then there's implicit objects holding the bridge, and then there are several rigid bodies that fall onto it. So you can see how one we play back. Uh, they're actually all colliding with the bridge, they're colliding with the ropes, and uh, the anchors that are holding these items have a maximum force set. So finally in the simulation this big ball hits the bridge and the anchors are breaking. So you can see how the bridge is breaking. Everything's falling down. When we look at that from the camera view it looks like this. Um, yeah, this, this really shows the potential of the software. You can really see how, how complex the scenery can be. So let's move it ahead to scene 22. And uh, this is half time, we have half of the scenes. So that's not bad. Scene 22 shows collision filtering. So here you can see how um, the green and the um, red characters are not colliding with each other, which is because we've set up collision filter flags. And also the modifier object that introduces this artificial force is only applied to the second group of objects. Scene 23 um, demonstrates how sleeping works. So what you can see here is actually, this is a very, very important scene. So um, you can see how these columns, they consist of rigid bodies. And basically um, there's an object flying into it. And you can see how it's breaking the first column and the other columns are not broken until they hit by a collision. So this allows you to create very stable rigid body setups and uh, basically fire off simulation once there is something happening. Um, number 24. Um, it's a huge uh, high-scale soft body simulation. I'll skip that one. 
so free to look at it yourself. It's just a big guy simulated as cloth. Um, just go ahead and, and play it back. So number 25, uh, it's quite interesting. It's basically a collision um, query scene where we have collision happening. And every time there's a collision happening, we change the color of the colliding objects to the underlying surface. So this will allow you to actually use the collision information inside of ice. So you have full control and full access to all of the collision that happens inside of momentum and uh, arbitrary information such as, such as uh, UVs and all of that stuff. Uh, number 26 I'll skip as well. Uh, it's just simply a very slow scene. Uh, it's basically showing uh, in creating rigid bodies um, on collisions as well. So here, what we can see here, uh, again, this scene is very particular and very powerful, um, but eventually hard to understand. So what you see here is, is a pile of bridge bodies that has been grouped using so-called clusters mechanisms. Um, I've also colored them by clusters so that you can see um, the, the clusters visually as well. Uh, now, there's a logic in the scene which basically breaks the cluster when it hits the ground. So notice how when we play back, um, and of course, now as I show it to you, it's not working. This is absolutely incredible. I think there's a save problem in the scene. Yeah. So actually, um, the scene wasn't saved properly. So let me just fix that and play back again. So now it's working. So you can see how um, every time one of these palais hits the ground, they're broken apart. Um, and especially the first one that is already on the ground. It's broken right from the start, and then everything that touches the ground slightly breaks apart. So it's very powerful because the breaking of clusters and, and creating groups can be controlled via ice, and it's very uh, very open and powerful. Let's have a look at the 28. Uh, it's exactly the opposite, actually. It's, uh, it's a scene where, um, on collision, we are increasing the cluster size by adding rich bodies to it. So you can see how this ball, um, when it's rolling and touching, um, it's actually kind of collecting these objects and it's creating a bigger collision object every time. Again, have a look at the ice tree to understand how it's working. I also color them by collision and everything. Uh, then we have 29 that uh, is just showing that plotted objects, like a plotted character animation, can interact with the rigid bodies. Uh, number 30. Uh, so we're doing good. We have 11 minutes of video. Um, number 30. Um, is uh, a scene that demonstrates how you can use clustering mechanisms um, and break them by contact. So in this case, they're breaking when they hit the ground. And again, this all doing full, full on convex hull collision, actual shape for every single one. Um, 31 uh, shows a very powerful feature that's called the continuous deformation. Um, it means that you can have the information on rigid bodies and their shape will actually update inside of the rigid body engine. So in this case, I have an anima animated extrusion. You can see how they're jumping based on their shape changes. Um, I'll jump the next scene. It's the same thing just for ice. Uh, number 33 uh, is again dealing with clusters and this time is basically using without using ice, allowing you to use the modifier object to break clusters in a very uh, visual way, so you can see how the objects that are passing through that null object are broken and become separate rigid bodies. Number 34 um, is using a mechanism that was introduced as a compound by one of our users. Uh, thanks for that. It's um, it's cluster groups based on, on null objects, very useful. Uh, it's basically a helper compound that allows you to uh, connect several objects in ICE together as a compound as a cluster and then that way they behave together so you can see how the green and the red area are behaving as one object. Number 35 um, is a helper scene as well that demonstrates you how you can use a group of objects and make particles out of them so that they match in that way. So basically these objects that you see here are separate objects and here you have one point cloud so it's basically particles one instance per object they're set up the right way so that you can simulate them using ice in case you want. And uh, number 36 is continuous deformation as well. We'll skip that. Number 37, uh, showing the plasticity features. So what you can see here is uh, rigid bodies interacting with rigid bodies and on high impulses, they're deforming the underlying rigid body. Uh, this again is without ice. It's just using the plasticity features of the deformed rigid body. 
and number 38 uh, is showing the global cache in action. So here, what, what, what I'm doing is basically using a secondary layer of simul simulation to create a dust. This is using uh, the global cache. So basically, the green part of the simulation is plotted using the momentum plotting tools. And then the global cache is active to access the contact information. So one nice thing in this scene to do is to hide the dust and actually show the context. So the context is the point cloud that you can see here. That I don't know if you can see it. Let me hide these guys. So these guys are basically the contact positions of all the collisions that happen. And they're in the global cache. So you can actually scrub through and have a look. And those are used to emit dust. You can get to the velocities and everything to properly inherit velocity. Then there's another scene. I'll actually open that as well. Number 39 that uh, is the same thing, uh, but just using additional filtering to emit um, dust only on the collision points that happen on the ground. So again, uh, you can access the data, you can find out what rigid bodies were causing the collisions and everything to, to properly filter collisions as well. Um, then we have some more denting scenes here. So uh, this is seen showing emissions that cause denting on objects. Again, this is using the plasticity features. You can see how they get deformed based on their impacts. I think this scene is plotted as well, so you might as well unplot it and have a look again. Then we have number 41. That is just a test for heavy clustering. So basically what I do is here is several deformed rigid bodies that are containing three overlapping boxes. And I use the initial cluster setting to force them to be one object, which means that we get concave objects and concave collisions for all these crosses. So it's just a very heavy scene that uh, uses a lot of those um, crosses to see uh, if the simulation is stable. It was one of my initial R&D tests, and I just put it as a simple scene because it's I think it's quite nice to look at. And you can see the complexity you can create with concave collisions and the performance that you're gaining. And last but not least, um, 42. Uh, again, is a scene that was uh, created through the beta list. It's, um, it's a demonstration scene for using animated goals instead of eyes. So what we have here is basically a pile of coins, and they're over time being triggered by a certain keyframe, uh, getting rotational goals to try to reach the spiral there on the ground. And so they're basically triggering there like crazy, and then they're let go and just fall off. It's just a way of showing you how you can use goals. Of course, this could be this right now uh, is not set to really reach the spiral. It's just showing you that they're from steady motion going into a quite chaotic, a turbulence-based motion, and then they're settling to their final goal. That's all the sample scenes. I hope it's not a complete overflow of information. Um, I'll be happy to answer questions through the normal support um, email, and uh, I'll hope you have fun with Momentum. And feel free to uh, contact us. Thanks for your attention. Bye.